In 2008, this artist was first launched into the limelight when he won hit music reality show Project Bane. In 2011, he then went on to release smash hit Kukere and had all of us trying to do the Etiki dance. Next thing you know, he was asking us for our waist and we were ready to give it to him. We call him Mr. Oreo. If you don't know who I'm talking about, you're living under a rock. My guest today is Inyanya. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are what's you? Up? It's Inyanya. What's happening? I'm good. The ever charming and beautiful. Oh, thanks. You're so sweet. Me. It's so good to Thank see you. you. Same here. It's been a Same minute. Here. Yeah. And you know, when I was doing your intro, yeah. I was talking about all these amazing experiences that you've had in your career. Yeah. But something that's really interesting and I want to jump right in is that yeah. I know you lost your parents before yeah. all of this started. Yeah. How do you My think dad. your dad, how do you think that affected your experience going straight into fame? Um, you know, because I my my dad and mom they separated, yeah. so I I grew up, you know, not being very happy with how family was. I mean, I had they gave me everything I I needed, but you know you know how it is when mm. you want family to be together. I never yeah. had that. So before my dad died, I was always praying for this platform, you know, to take off, mm -hmm. you know, just leave the city. Not because I was angry, but just to change the environment, mm. you know, see another. You know, see what life has for me at the other side. How do you, do you feel like, <laughs> it's okay. Are you okay? I just, you know, <laughs> you know when you talk about these things, you just yeah. kind of have like flashbacks. Do you feel, do, do you feel like there's some unsaid things that you wish you had said to him before he passed away? <sighs> nah, I just wish he was here to see, mm. you know, the man that I've, you know, I'm, I'm now. The, the man I've become now. So. Yeah, yeah. What was your relationship like with him before he passed away? Uh, my dad was, we were close. Like, yeah. we lived together because I had a, a brother that died too. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, me and my dad pretty much just lived together, did everything together. Mm -hmm. you know, he was my best friend and everything. So, I just wish that he was alive to me, you know, just see me today. Or yeah, so. of yeah. course. But apart of course. from that, you know. Great memories. That's good. So it's been a long season of silence from you. And I think <laughs> you definitely, and you're laughing because you're like, oh, this question again. Yeah, because everybody's, everybody's. Because of, that. you know, yeah, when we, when we know you, you gave us amazing music. <laughs> and I think you continue to give us amazing music because your sound evolved from, you know, Kukere to becoming more stronger into R&B. Yeah. But why the season of silence? Why the season of silence? You know, well, after Made Men, right? Yeah. Because what people don't know is, uh, people see me and say, oh, why did you sell your shares and all that stuff? I didn't sell my shares. I left, I left Made Men at the time because there was so much darkness, like, in the midst of the, you know, all the wings and everything. Yeah. And so I felt that like I needed to move, so I let that go. Okay. And, and, Maven was, uh, I shout out to Jazzy for this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because Jazzy gave me that platform to put music out because I mm -hmm. left Mate Man and I didn't want, I didn't want anything from Mate Man. So yeah. Jazzy just said, look, man, you've built something over the years and starting all over is pretty, it's not going to be as easy as you think. Mm -hmm. So just put up music here. Mm -hmm. From, from here and then work on something. So people really thought I signed to make my, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't like a legal signing. Yeah. You know, it was just love. And then from there, Temple Music came. Yeah. When Temple Music came, you know, I, you know, I loved the vision. I, I fell in love with the dream and everything. And I was like, okay, let me try this. You know, I went, you know, we, 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 you know, that's where I put out, up to something, hold on, mm -hmm. good vibes. Yeah, okay. You know, and then after that, it was time for me to move because now I, I, I felt like I got to the point where I had to put out my own thing, you know, have my own family, have my own team, mm -hmm. me and Alex. You talked about Made Men and you and Ubi had a very good relationship. Of course. You know, when you guys started. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned that there was darkness and it was a challenge. Talk to, talk to me a little bit more about that season because that was also one of your highest, it was a huge peak in your career. Yeah. But then there's other stuff that's happening. 
Oh uh, man, I really don't like to talk about all this stuff, but I realize that sometimes you have to clear the air, you know. Mm -hmm, of so it's, it's a good thing that you're asking this. When I said it was darkness, I was not myself anymore because I felt like there was no trust anymore. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. Because at the time I was thinking I co-owned me, man. Yeah. With Ubi. Okay. But I later realized that my name was not on any of the farms when I signed. When you found that out, right? Here's yeah. someone that you've been working with for years. Yeah, you I was guys, broken. You guys came up together. Yeah. Like this is your manager, yeah. your business partner. Yeah. And he's giving you a contract that literally your name is not even part of the ownership. What was your first reaction? That was the beginning of you know, me just saying to hell with everything. Mm, mm. You know what did Ubi say when you confronted him? We, to be honest. Or when you had a conversation with him about this fact that like, yo, we're supposed to be co-owners, but this contract says we're not. To be honest, uh, Mr. Amadou Pinnick, okay. right? He was the one that brought us together. Mm. Because at that point, my spirit, my mind, my yeah. soul, left the yeah, whole thing of course. like at that point i was like i don't care i'm mm. gonna start all over mm. as long as i'm happy do you get what i'm saying as long as i'm in a good space to make good music i'm mm. fine i don't mm. care about what whatever we made together and all that stuff i don't care about all that i'm ready to start so the backlash that you received let's yeah. talk a bit about going on to the mavens right yeah. you mentioned that you didn't sign with them but what was yeah. your experience like with them overall i mean don jazzy is an amazing producer um and now you're coming from a place where someone quote and unquote betrayed you and now you have to kind of try and build that trust again what was the experience like with them that was that was healing for me mm. that was like the best time of that period of that whole situation i was in yeah that was the best moment because jazzy just opened the family and said look mm -hmm. you're one of us and and everybody just showed me that love because it came from jazzy so it was like from jazzy to tiwa to baby fresh to everybody it was just love and that really gave me life you get what i'm saying because mm -hmm. to be honest with you i was broken yeah do you get what i'm saying like i was Broken. Have Man. you ever had a sit down conversation with Ubi about everything that happened? Of and course. has he explained himself? Of course. And what was his reasoning behind everything? To be honest with you, yeah, we, we passed that phase. Okay. To be honest with you, everywhere I go, that's what I hear. Why you do that to your guy? What did they say you did to him? What, like, was, the, what, was, what was the narrative? Oh, like, oh, he, after all the things he did for me, yeah. I left him for Temple. Temple paid me some millions and stuff like that. I'm like, what? What do you know? The one thing that happens with fame is that you get an amount of attention from women. Yeah. And it's kind of like blinding. You have so many women who are throwing themselves at you. Yeah. Do you feel like you were able to handle that, specifically speaking about your relationship with Frida Francis? <laughs> You know, because I remember. Yeah, yeah, I knew you were going to go. I there. remember when yeah. we were shooting Project Fame and you guys came to yeah. set together. Yeah. And it was really cool seeing you, you know, in a relationship, a stable relationship. It was a public relationship. I mean, that experience, what was that <laughs> like for you? It was, it was a great experience. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I've, I've, you see, I, I have taste of all. <laughs> It's funny, but it's true. I've tasted. Yeah, I mean, look, real, Yvonne Nelson, she's hot too. Real good looking, and not just good looking, but intelligent yeah, women. Yeah, and, definitely. And those two women you mentioned, trust yeah. me, they got, they, they've got that upstairs. They've, they've got that up here. Frida was amazing. Uh, she was a blessing to me at the time. Yeah. But you know, once once you go public these days, it's, it's like everybody owns the relationship, and and now you guys have to. It, you don't even know when you start leaving for them. Okay. And you guys don't even have each other anymore. I feel like there were too many people, too many, especially too many uh, people she, ex she had so much respect for. Yeah. You know, she didn't want to break their heart. And I, I, I just, I felt like at that point, I just got to the point where, yeah, I, I could do more. Mm. 
I felt like I was, I was not done with my music. Okay. You know, I felt like, yo, come on, man, Bobo, you need to put down, you know, a lot of investments for the future. Yeah. You need to do this and that. And all of this was happening, and I was still pushing it. I was still dropping So being videos. in a relationship was distracting? It was not distracting, but at that point, I felt like she was ready. Oh, for marriage. Do you understand? Okay. Like, I feel like she was ready because she's very intelligent. She's doing well for yeah, herself. Very well. And no disrespect, though, but I'm not the kind of guy who wants to be with a woman because she's doing well. And then I, I forget that I have my own goals. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a wait for me to sort my life out. Yeah. Or I can't do it right now. Okay. Do you feel like now, like in a situation, if you were going to date someone, do you feel ready? Of course. Are you dating someone now? It's kind of a yes or no question. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, just checking it. You're not sure? I'm just checking it. I'm being real. I'm just checking it. Okay. And I think I'm scared of you people. You're scared of us. What have we done? Once, see, once you carry the relationship from me, come here like this. Okay. Wow, like that. This like is it. just you. None of us are here. Yaya is in a relationship. That's all we need to know. I want to find see, out. Yeah, you though. can't impose relationship I on me. <laughs> I think it's just a reputation. Like musicians generally, they have a reputation of being notorious for being players. But nobody's saying I'm, I'm, player. I'm not. I'm not a player. Nobody, I, I, be, I actually believe you. I'm I don't a, know if I'm, I'm not out a there player. You, I'm but not I actually a player. All you. my girlfriends, every girlfriend I've had, trust me, if I want to get them back, I, all I have to do is just show that I'm serious this time. They will come back. Because if they're watching me now, they know I'm a cool guy. Oh, confidence. Right. He says he can get you back. Okay, yeah, let's talk about music, sound. The industry, I mean, the music industry is always exploding. And of course. The sound is changing. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about this sound that you're working on now. And also just trying to navigate like yourself in the industry. How are you feeling about that? I know my music, mm -hmm. and the reason why pe everybody thinks, "Oh, you, how's this new mm -hmm. sound gonna be?" is because yeah. I've not put out so much in a while. Okay. But I've not been quiet too. I've been, I've not been quiet and just doing nothing. I've been recording. My EP is coming out. It's called the, the Rebirth EP. Mm -hmm. A lot of collaborations on there with my colleagues. You know, and uh, yeah. So, new musicians, new artists. Who are some of your favorites? Like, who sounds? Who sound are you really enjoying right now? Oh man, I'm feeling uh, Zlatan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah killing yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. 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 Um, everybody, everybody's doing good. Uh, Sensi Ma, Skibi, Skibi is killing. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah. Young Miley, David, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Bonner, Bonner. Definitely. Bonner, Bonner, Bonner had a good 2018. Do you feel like you, because I know for you, like, doing Kukere was originally, like, when we're thinking about Project Fame, yeah. you were doing R&B. Yeah. Then you experimented with Kukere, which yeah. of course makes sense because you're yeah. from Calabar. Yeah. Now that you're working on this new EP, what's the sound like? It's just grown and sexy, man. Okay. It's, just, it's better. I know you're releasing an EP this year, and mm -hmm. I remember there was a post on Instagram where you talked about, like, people trying to distract you from the actual music and feeling as though you wanted to do it your way mm -hmm. and also not listening to what any haters are saying. Mm -hmm. How are you going into this output, this um, EP release with a different mind? That's why I started with No Drama. Okay. That's why I started with the song I just dropped, No Drama, because what I want to do is just be the musician that yeah. I am. But, you know... Where is the drama coming from, though? I mean, from all these people, I left Temple, and they were, I don't even know what it is, but they still, not they, but one person there mm. just doesn't, I think he wants me to go back to the village because he's fucked me with everything. Okay. I don't know, I've, you know, pretty much done everything possible to see how everything can be sorted out the best way, but you know when what, people feel what, like they what, have, you know when people think they, they have power and they What conditions did you leave Temple on? The best condition, you know. Was your contract over with them? No, nah, my contract was not over. I don't know because I, I gave my best. I was the one that took Bissola to Temple. Yeah. 
there's so many people that I, I brought to Temple. I was, yeah. I mean, the plan was, let's do this together. It was not even, oh, just come and be the artist. It got to a point where we're like, ah, you just get to a point, you have to buy shares, yeah. let's build this. Th that was the agreement, you understand? But when I got in there, at some point, you know, because of how they, you know, got me from Ubi and all of that stuff, yeah. they felt, they, you know, it's, it's whatever I say. No. Mm. You know, we have an agreement to so mm -hmm. do your part, I do my part. When you don't do your part, there's a problem. Do you feel like they're upset with you because you breached the contract? Like I didn't breach no contract. Before you were supposed to have left. I didn't, I didn't breach any contract. Have you tried having conversations with them? That's what I'm trying to say to yeah. you. This is, we, this is not just conversation. I like, I like to, I'm a very, 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 very understanding person. So I like to dialogue and sort things out. Yeah, of Instead, course. the only reason why I'm doing this is because there's so many, I need to just let people know that, look, yeah, it's not quiet because yeah, can't sing anymore. Yeah, yeah it's not quiet because, oh, doesn't have money to do music. I'm just quiet because I've got people like these people using whatever connects they have to frustrate everything that I do. I'm yeah. just saying, look, I want to make music. Just let me do me, do you. Yeah. And now that you're under... Violet 360. Completely new management. We own and we're ready and we're doing good. So what do you feel like in this time next year, where do you want to see yourself? Like, what are you hoping for for yourself? I know one thing for sure, this is going to be a very beautiful year for me, yeah. especially because in the midst of all of this too, I've not been sleeping, I've been working on just that every time you want to release a song. Yeah. And you're other. allowed to release new music on this management, you're right. not going to have issues <sighs> from your prior management or anything? Uh, no, we don't have all those, all those ones, we cleared all those ones. Okay, good. We, don't, good. we don't have all those ones, it's just that you know how these guys are, they will always take advantage of the fact that you're famous. Mm. And they they know that everybody's gullible. Like once you post stuff, everybody just. I mean, we do up. live in a day and age where whatever Sad. it comes out, that people believe it before the research. So I know you're really, really close to your hometown, yeah. Calabar, and you're hometown. always going back. Yeah. Do you think you would ever consider running for politics? Of course. Really? Yes. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, much later. Do you know what you want to run for yet? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just want to represent my people and yeah. you know do good for them. I just feel like I can use the popularity to be a blessing to mm, them. Mm. So I want to go there saying, let me use this popularity yeah. and be a blessing to you guys. I'm not going there to say, oh, because I'm popular, you know. So yeah. you know, I just hope when that time comes, they give me the chance. I think they would. I yeah. think they would. Yeah. You rep hard for your people. Yeah. Okay, so I have a game for us to play. Okay. And you have to say the very first thing that comes to your mind when I call out these names. You can't repeat the same word. First thing that comes, don't pause, don't think about it. Just first thing that comes to your mind. All right, first name is Tenny. Talent. All right, Jacquees. Magic. Burna Boy. Incredible. Speed Darlington. Lyris. <laughs> Serena Williams. Gifted. And Nigeria. Blessed. Oh, high five. You're a positive one. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on The Juice. Thank you. And for being honest and open and sincere. I feel like a lot of your fans are going to understand you more. I feel yeah. like I understand more. Yeah. And looking forward to all the new music that you're going to be dropping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you to my fans, you yeah. know, and everybody, uh, DJs, um, OAPs, and everybody that's been holding. You know, I see a lot of people that say, yeah, where you at? Yeah, yeah we miss you. And I'm just saying, look, this year, okay. Chinga <laughs> way. All right, guys. Well, yeah. that is it Thank for today's you. episode of The Juice with Iaya. Make sure that you comment down below and let us know what's your favorite Iaya song and what, music are, what kind of music are you looking forward to hearing from him from this year. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you on the next episode of The Juice.